following show is a paid program. The Cam Hill Show. If you'd like to advertise your business or become a sponsor, contact the Cam Hill Show at gmail.com. National recording artist, Mr. Gerald Austin. Let me tell you a little bit about him. We usually see him with the, it usually says the Manhattans featuring Gerald Austin. He is the nephew of Shirley Reeves. She was the lead singer of the Shirelles. I learned that too. Grammy, Grammy Award winners of the Manhattans. Today is his 50th anniversary in music. Hey, my friend. How are you? Today is your anniversary. Wow. Exactly right. There's and no it's way. on this day, wow. on a Wednesday. On a Wednesday yeah. this day. Yeah. We did. October. It was we on did a Wednesday. It. Wow. Yeah. Let's talk about Mr. Gerald Austin, my friend. I'm telling you, we got to do a shout out to Vice President of Emilian White of A Star pulling us together. We do a shout out to him. <laughs> Yes, a million. Oh, please. Thank you, a million. And thank you for all you've done for this group. Oh, God. He, you know, we go back. We go yeah, back. Absolutely. And I'm very grateful to, to have met him and for him to still be a part of my life. Absolutely. Yeah. How did you get started along this journey? Actually, I started singing when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Maybe three or four years old, I was singing. And um, I sang all the way, I sang in high school, elementary school and high school. And we formed a group. Um, by the way, my uncle Johnny, the late Johnny Fields is one of the founding members of Blind Boys of Alabama. And his son and I, he's my uncle, and his son and I started singing when we were uh, young, six, seven years old. And we formed a group later on in uh, high school called Gerald Austin and the New Imperials. And um, on the weekends and on Friday and Saturday and on Sunday, we were the Gospel Jubilee. And um, my last year, I graduated uh, in 1970 and I met the Manhattans in 1970 and at college. I was going to Kittrell Junior College and I met the Manhattans and they heard me, they wanted to use some of my equipment. So I brought the equipment in and set it up and I started singing, uh, when we get married, we'll have a big celebration. And they heard me singing and they asked me to sing on the show. And I did. They took my name and address. And that following, I would say that following Monday, I was flown to Dallas, Texas, where I watched the Manhattans perform with the Supremes for 10 days. Um, prior to that, the reason I joined the group, their original lead singer, George Smith, was very ill. And he was traveling with them. And unfortunately, his illness turned for the worst on the second day of their tour, and uh, which was the day after they left my school. And they had to fly him back home. And they had Philip Flood standing in, which was Blue Love, the late Blue Love, its cousin. He stood in for Smitty. And then they flew me down to Texas and I watched Philip and the group perform for 10 days. And then I came back to New York and rehearsed and um, the rest is history. Wow. Wow. 
Everybody has asked about this first song we're going to feature, and that's Shining Star. Let's look at it. brings back memories oh yes yes <laughs> oh gosh i remember when we recorded that in fact i remember the day that i first heard it we were at columbia records preparing for our new album and um uh mickey eisner he was the vice president of of r b department and he said i got this song i want you to hear and he played it it was written by leo graham and paul richmond and leo used to produce tyrone davis and um, so Leo was singing it. And the minute we heard the hook of that song, honey, you are my shining star. Don't you go away. It just clicked with all of us. And um, <clears throat> we were excited about it. And so we flew out to Chicago and we started recording with Leo Graham and hence Shining Star. Well, I tell you, the choreography of that, we were talking about that a little bit before. We don't see that that synergy in the choreography like we like we used to. How was yeah. that? That song was choreographed by uh, Charlie Atkins, Pop Charlie Atkins. He started working with us in the late 70s, early 80s, early 80s. In fact, that was 1980. I actually believe it was 1980 when Pop started with us. And... Um, he did, as you know, Pop did all the Motown artists, Gladys Knight and the Pips, The Temptations, The Jacksons, you name it, he did them. Supremes, he choreographed them. And um, he started working with us, and that's where our choreography really came into play. Of course, we had um, Jaime Rogers. He did our first for Kiss and Say Goodbye. He choreographed the show for that era. And he, Jaime Rogers, as you know, was the... Um, choreographer and producer of the Sonny and Cher show mm -hmm. back in the 70s. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned Kiss and Say Goodbye, 1976. It says here what I love about it is that it was number one in four countries. Yes. Wow. Oh, my God. In 76. 76, that's right. And, and right now, it still gets a lot of play. And there is no place that we can perform in the world that we cannot sing Kiss and Say Goodbye. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I remember the day um, we were rehearsing, and we had rehearsal this particular day, and Blue called me and said, Gerald, get to the studio early. I got this song I want you to hear. That I, I dreamed about it. Mm. And I got up and I played it on the piano, and he said, so I want you to meet me at the studio. So I got to the studio early. He sat at the piano, and the very first thing he played for me was, 
It's gonna hurt me, I can't lie. Maybe you meet another guy. Understand me, won't you try? Let's just kiss and say goodbye. And I remember it was it's so clear in my mind right now. Right. It was like today. Wow. And we went down to Philly, we recorded it at Sigma Sound with Bobby Martin. And um, it was our very first gold and platinum. It made history at Columbia Records. It was the first, it was the second single in the history of Columbia Records to go certified platinum. Wow, that's something. And let's just think of those years, 76, let's just think what 10 years before 60s, in the 60s, what all was happening. Oh God, yes, oh yes. And I'm, that think, was I'm a, talking about it with African-American people themselves. Exactly. So, yes. yes. And that's just 10 years. That's not a long time. That's not. And even after I got into the group, it was still the same in a lot of places. Yes. It was the same in a lot of places. And let's that just racism, talk about the racism yeah. a little bit in the sense that you all couldn't just go just straight to the door and just go in where you wanted to. It was a lot of racism back then. Exactly. There were times when, um, when um, I remember just before I got in the group, I remember the guys talking about, and I've heard about it with Jackie Wilson and Sam Cooke, but they also toured with Jackie Wilson. And there were audiences that in certain places in the South, like Augusta, uh, Atlanta, certain cities like that, Mississippi, the audience, if there was a combined clock, um, audience of black and white, the black set on one side and the white set on the other side. Wow. They could not. Cry. They still could not, yeah. even though it was a, a black artist, they still could not sit together. That's right. They could not sit together. Wow. And uh, I remember the last time that I faced anything like that, we were put on a house arrest in Nashville, Tennessee, mm. at, a, a, at a hotel called The Matador. And we performed at a club called a jail, beautiful place. And it was the club, the club was integrated. And Blue used to always say, Well, we're having a party and the hotel that is gonna be in room two, two, two. So when we got after the show, we got back and um the our promotion person was bringing us back to the hotel and he said, Why are these vice cops out here? And they were carrying loaded guns, you know, shotguns, pistols. And so the one he stopped and asked one of the um, officers, "What was their problem?" And he said, "Are you staying here?" And he said, "Bob said no." He said, "What?" Well, he used the N word to drop those all those guys off, and you get the hell off the property. Wow. That and they they told us we couldn't come out of our rooms, and they turned our phones off. We couldn't make no calls. And the next morning, it was like nothing had never happened. Really? And we went to the executive office of that particular hotel chain. Nothing ever happened. We wrote the Chamber of Commerce. Nothing ever was done about it. Wow. No response. No response at all. Wow. No. That's something just but, to know about that. Yeah, but we made it through. You made it through. Wow. Yes. Wow. Let's do this. We're going to take a break, but we want to see this next video, take me where you want me and we'll go on in the break and we'll be right back. Someone like you 
To the Cam Hill Show after these messages. Ron Carter Cadillac, Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, delivers test drives to your home or office. Like the new 2020 XT4 Luxury Collection, only $299 a month. The new 2020 XT5 Premium Luxury Collection, $399 a month. Or the first ever 2020 XT6 Premium Luxury Collection, just $499 a month. All for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase and choose 0% APR for 60 months plus $2,000 bonus cash with no payments until March 2021. Visit roncartercadillac.com. I'm a Texas voter. And I plan to vote by mail-in ballot. I'm a Texas voter. And I plan to vote safely in person. I'm a Texas voter. And I plan to vote early. I am a Texas voter. And I plan to vote safely in person. In this coming election, voters aged 50 plus will make all the difference. We'll make the difference. We'll make the difference. We'll make the difference. We'll make the difference in elections across the state. So make a plan now. So you can vote however you choose. It doesn't matter where you vote how you vote, or who you vote for. What matters, what matters, what matters, what matters is that you have a plan to vote. For more information, head to aarp.org slash tx. Vote. 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 The Valko. Or vote ka na mat bhuli ga. Vote. 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 Ngoi hoi thao piu. When it comes to protecting yourself and your partners, all the information out there can be overwhelming. Visit our website. We are a free and confidential service striving to help you stay informed and stay notified. We are committed to a healthy Houston. If you helped a friend get a job and once they were hired, they ignored you, what would you think of them? For a quarter of a century, Congressional District 18 has voted for Sheila Jackson Lee. And what do we have to show for it? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me 13 times, she's got to go. I'm Wendell Champion, and I need your vote. Visit me at champion2020.com. I'm Wendell Champion, and I approve this message. Hello again, Stafford. We are extremely proud of the diverse community we have in Stafford. We need you to get out and vote for Cecil Willis. Have you been injured in an 18-wheeler accident, truck accident, car accident? Was someone texting and ran into the back of you, not paying attention? It doesn't matter what it is. Give me a call, Attorney Willie Powell's. We'll fix it today. The number is 281-881-2457. Again, that number is 281-881-2457. We'll fix it today. Call attorney Willie Powell. And now back to the Cam Hill Show. We are back with Mr. Gerald Austin. We were just talking. We had just gone into the break with that famous song, Take Me Where You Want Me. How did that come about? That, that was actually my very first uh, recording for my debut solo album. Mm -hmm. Written by Stan Shepard and produced by Stan Shepard and Jimmy Varner. Um, I remember uh, that was, and I was on that, at that particular time, I was on Taj, which later became Taj Motown. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but that was the very first record I recorded. And I remember the night my plane was delayed coming into Reno. We were recording at a studio called Granny's House. Mm -hmm. And my plane was delayed. I got off the plane, 
They picked me up at the airport, drove me straight to the studio. Everybody was waiting. I walked in, unrehearsed, sang the song <laughs> one time, and the rest is history. <laughs> Absolutely. You came in with your coat on. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. And and that song, it, it, it really um, expresses the feeling that you have for your person, the person that you in love with your spouse, you know. Yes. Take me where to. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Just looking at that after 50 years, just the business, and we talked a little bit, the business side of music. A lot of people are very great artists. They're very great performers, but they lose out on the business, the money side of it. And the royalties, their publishing, things like that, they lose out on it. In speaking to them, and we were talking about that, you guys had great uh, management and things like that that helped you. Yeah, and we, we were truly blessed. Yeah. Um, because we had we had a management that, that taught us, first of all, there were unions we should have joined. You know, uh, the, I think it was the American Guild, which is no longer in, in, in um, business, but we joined AFTRA, and which is a, a union that AFTRA is American Federation of Radio and Television Artists. Mm -hmm. And also we were ta taught to, and we learned that everything don't last for all, always. Mm -hmm. And that it was very important that we would write our own songs. We had our own publishing company and, and we were set up that we will be able to receive our own royalties, our own publishing, our own writing that that will come in, come into the group. And a lot of artists um, don't, didn't do that. They a lot of times artists were just selling for just getting record, you know. Right. And in the, the day, they got a hit record. <clears throat> excuse me. And their album or CD may cost hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars. And at the end of the day, if it was a million seller, they didn't get anything. They have right. to go out to work. They didn't own their own publishing or they didn't do any writing. They didn't have any production rights in the CD or the album. You know, and that's very important that artists today learn the business. Yes. Upcoming artists to learn the business. I love that. And now, now that <clears throat> there are no real major companies uh, offering deals, you have to be independent. And the best part about being independent is that everything is yours. When you write your song, you publish your song, everything comes to you. If you sell, you may, may, may not, on sometimes in certain cases, you may not sell as many records as you would with a major company. But if you sold 50,000 records, it all belonged to you. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that is crucial now because I've talked to a lot of artists, uh, mainstream artists now, they're living <laughs> off of those things right now, you know, because of COVID. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, and you, and you have to be frugal. Artists today have to be frugal with their money. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I look at the way are some of the artists today spend money as though it's never going to end but everything ends. And if you put yourself in a bracket, you know, where you making, you have two or three platinum albums and you start living a platinum life, when the time, when it's all began to come back down, which everything got to come back down, and you living above your means, you lose everything. So, you know, it's, it's always good to be frugal with your money, save your money, invest your money, and most of all, learn the business so that you can receive money. Right. That's good. That's good right there. And and looking at it just over the years, someone wanted to know about slow motion. How did that song come about? Slow motion was also written by Stan Shepard and produced by Stan Shepard and Jimmy Varner. Um, I remember when I when Stan Stan called me after the um, we were getting ready to go into production. He said, man, I got this great song. I want you to hear it. And and it, it's just a great song. He said, it's about making love and, and all the things you want to say. And it's real nice and it's clean. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got to uh, California, 
Now, forgive me, Stan, if you're watching this. Stan could not sing a lick, <laughs> but he sang, he sang Take Me, and he sang uh, Slow Motion for me. And he, but he had the emotion that he wanted in that song. Right. And after I learned the lyrics to Slow Motion and really got into it, the, the feeling just was just natural. Cause I've always sang with, uh, did songs with feeling. Yes. I always talk things from my heart. And after I learned the song, I could visualize what Stan was trying to relate to me and what I was getting out of the song. And uh, that was slow motion, but it was a beautiful song. And um, to this day, we still do it in our show. Absolutely. The other one people always ask for is sin for me. Oh, yes. Now, um, that song was produced by Nick Martinelli. Mm -hmm. And it was, what was so, what really blew me away was the day that we were recording it, Nick said, you know, um, I, I produced this on Atlantic Star. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. He said, I produced uh, um, Sin For Me on them. And unbelievable. And then, um, but it was a song that we used to do um, in my group, yes. Gerald Austin and the Materials. And I always loved the song. I was able to sing it, do it my way. And I, I enjoyed singing the song so very much. I enjoyed making the video. It was just one of those moments that were magic. Wow. We were talking a little bit earlier about just uh, your performances when you guys got together, and we always see the Manhattans featuring Gerald Austin. And when we would yeah. see that, just the synergy. And when you would come here to the arena, we're here in Houston, and you would come to the arena, just, just the intimacy of that space that you all just took us just there on all of your songs at every it, performance. It was awesome because we pick up energy from the audience. Mm -hmm. and fan base in Houston that's out of this world. And and it, it's like they reach out and touch us. When we walk on stage, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. And we we give back. We said, we have to give this energy back. Yeah. You know, we want our fans to know how we feel about them, mm -hmm. how we feel about the songs that we're singing. And, and, and um, th at the arena, we were so close to the audience, it was like, I have actually walked out and touched someone mm -hmm. while I was right. Walked right. to the edge of the stage as it's going around and held hands with somebody. You know, yes. it's that energy that we receive there. And every time we go to Houston, it is the same. Um, and it's it's a wonderful feeling. It's just an awesome feeling. In fact, we did the last one of the last shows with Teddy Pendergrass at the arena. Wow. Yeah. I love the fact that each time you all come on stage, no matter if it's one person or if thousands, yeah. you're going to receive that same showmanship. That's exactly right. Because our fans deserve to hear the best. And we try to give our best at all times. And, and one thing I've always carried in, in my heart is that, that the Manhattans is not doing a favor for our fans. Mm -hmm. Our fans are doing a favor. Not do we're not doing a favor for our fans by saying it again. They're doing a favor by coming to see us. Wow. And take their time and come and sit down and listen for us for that hour, that hour and a half or forty five minutes or whatever time we're doing. And it's a blessing. So mm -hmm. we're always in that mode that our fans are our first priority. When we walk on stage even when we record, it's the same thing. Uh, it's two o'clock. Yeah. What I love about what you guys do is that, and that's all the time for you. You Every time I see you every, in any, any aspect, any space, even on TV, it's the same thing, that you all give your best. Oh, yes. If that's the only way. I've, I've always been taught that from the time when my father... My father used to sing. My mother was, used to sing. My uncle, uh, Johnny Fields, used, was singing with the blind boys. Mm -hmm. And everybody could sing. Yeah. So and I learned to sing 
in church. Yes. And that's where the feeling came from because, you know, the emotion would, would run so high sometimes. The spirit would be so high in some of those programs at church yes. that you just had to give it all, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's a blessing. It is a blessing. And um, that's the only way I could truly express it is that emotion and that raw spirit. And it all came started in the church. Well, I tell you what, 50 years, I don't see what you're doing. I was, I told Lenny Williams yesterday, just like yeah. yourself, you all are eating or drinking something. We not. <laughs> you guys keep you going know, in reverse. You keep going younger and younger. What is it? I find in this business, first of all, I don't smoke. I don't drink. Mm -hmm. And I work out, mm -hmm. you know, and also this business, if you treat it right, it'll treat you right. Yeah. This business and keep you youthful inside and out. You know, you want to, you feel like once you can control your way, your, your living out here as an entertainer mm -hmm. and doing the right things, you you have that energy, you have that feeling, I want to always look nice. I want to always be in shape. Mm -hmm. I want to always be able to perform for my audience, my mm -hmm. fans. And that's what you work towards. Mm -hmm. And plus, you <laughs> feel. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. The one question everybody asks is, why did you go solo in 88? It was 88. <laughs> Excuse me. I went solo in 88. It came to a point, we were working so much. Mm -hmm. This is, Cam, we would go out sometimes for um, a weekend and end up staying two weeks or three weeks on the road. Mm -hmm. We were working and traveling. We were working six days a week and traveling on Sundays. And um, so it got to a point where we couldn't rehearse like we wanted to. And it, it got it got to be a job. Mm -hmm. And um, I also, on my, on my part, I also wanted a solo career to do sing solo. So when it got that rough, that, that running and working and working, it just seemed like a job. And I just felt like it was time that I needed a break. Mm -hmm. And I came to the fellas that um, in 86, it, uh, that would be that during that year, that would be my last year because um, I, I wanted to do a solo project. And I had no deal, no, not knowing where I was going to go mm -hmm. or anything, but I did that break. And fortunately, I landed a deal with Taj Records. Wow. Um, and uh, I worked and I performed for six years on the road by myself, and it was awesome. But there was nowhere in the world that I performed that I did not have to perform the Manhattan records. <laughs> All the records that I've had as a solo record artist, they were good, they were great, people loved them. But I could not leave the venue without singing Kiss and Say Goodbye, without singing Shining Star, We Never Danced to a Love Song, Hurt, I had to do them all. <laughs> I had to do them all. So I, I, in, in a sense, I never left the Manhattans. <laughs> you did not. But, you did not. Yeah, yeah. And you have some new things that are out. Let's talk about some new things. In 2019, looked like you had something new. It was called Get Ready. And you said some, new, some new guys were on there. Let's talk about how all that started. Okay. Well, we, we um, came back together to do a reunion, a 30th reunion. And when we came back to do the reunion, uh, there were one, two of the original members, Sonny Bivens, and the late Sonny Bivens and the late Kenneth Kelly. They didn't want to come back. They um, they had started, you know, Sonny had started another group, and Kenneth was teaching, and he, you know, he had an elderly mother, and he didn't want to leave her and and come back into the business because it was, you know, it was still rough for us. Mm -hmm. So we uh, were able to get Troy May and uh, Dave Tyson. And they came into the group and they fit like a glove, hand in glove. And they've been here since then, 20, going on 27 years. And it's been awesome. Mm. And uh, there on, we recorded um, our first, actually our first uh, album together. And it's called The Manhattans Featuring Gerald Austin, The Legacy Continues. And we have a brand new single that's called um, Oh gosh, she's coming. 
she's coming home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and our first, first single from that CD, right. as you say, was Ready, which we had the pro, uh, opportunity to do a video. We couldn't do a video to uh, She's Coming Home because of COVID. Right, right, right. So what's the gist of She's Coming Home, other than She's Coming Home? <laughs> yeah, she's Coming Home is, 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 is um, about, um, I use myself as an example. You know, the, the, your spouse, yes. the woman that you, and she's uh, very beautiful. Mm-hmm. And you go out where all the guys are looking. And, you know, you make you feel good when you see the guys looking, you know. Yeah. Wow, look at me. Got my <laughs> eye on me. You know, and and the minute you step away from the table, one or two of them may walk over and try to offer a number or say something. And that's okay. So the song is merely saying you can talk all you want to, you can hit all you want to on my my lady, but she's coming home with me yeah. at the end of I like that. I like that. Earth, no matter what happens, she's coming home with me. Mm-hmm. And I know that she tells me how much she loves me. Wow. I love yeah. that one about that. Well, I'm telling you, you have done so much over the years. 50 years. And we've talked about that a little bit before about your 50th at this point in the celebration and how COVID. Oh, yeah. And now we talk about COVID and how it's put a pause on the world. And I just put a pause in our life. What things do you think we will be different, will be different going in music wise? I think uh, di- it's going to be different because, first of all, this is just my opinion. Mm-hmm. Everybody's not right. going to take a flu, uh, take a vaccine when it comes out, mm-hmm. number one. Mm-hmm. And, and then you got some people that don't believe in vaccine. Mm-hmm. So, what's probably going to happen is that um, we'll have to do concerts. Uh, on a different level with spacing or um, or video or in the clubs, the places that we perform, they have to wear masks. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's going to be, a, the entertainment will definitely be different or we do outside, more outside concerts, you know, but um, it's, it's, it's going to definitely be a big change. It's not going to, I don't think it's going to go back to quite the normal way we did concerts before. Absolutely. So many people are talking about just the uh, uh, fact as an artist, because you do ver- some people doing virtual, you know, uh, different right. things virtually as far as concerts or something like that, or they'll do their music virtually. But they say just the audience uh, being there gives energizes them and gives them so much life when they're there. Yeah. It's just a difference when you're just in front of a camera. Exactly. You have to. It's like you have to feel that from the audience. You know, there. Um, um, I think the Whispers just did um, a virtual show, and um, they were able to have a few fans in the audience. And and that's what I would like to do. With once we get it together and we do a virtual show, yes, I would like to have a minimum minimum amount of fans there, so that you can feel the the feeling from them, feel something. And therefore, you're able to give your all and just give it your best. So um, it is very difficult to do something virtual with no audience. It is very difficult. Absolutely. Let's do this. We'll take a break and we'll be right back with Gerald Austin. Right back to the Cam Hill Show after these messages. Now come test drive the much-anticipated all-new 2021 Cadillac Escalade at Ron Carter Cadillac. And for a limited time, get an unheard of $19,000 in total savings on new 2020 Escalades or pages $879 a month with only $1 down, only at Ron Carter Cadillac. Visit us today. Gulf Freeway just two minutes south of the Beltway. Visit roncartercadillac.com, Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer. In this coming election, voters 50 plus will make the difference in elections across the state. The time is now to make a plan so you can vote how you choose in this coming election. Eligible voters can vote by mail-in ballot and all registered voters can vote safely in person early or on voting day. Don't wait, make a plan to vote today. 
For more voting information, head to AARP.org. I'm Tina Knowles Lawson, and I'm a proud voter. In this coming election, voters age 50 plus will make the difference in elections across the state. The time is now to make a plan so you can vote how you choose. In this coming election, eligible voters can vote by mail in ballot. And all registered voters can vote safely in person early or on voting day. Don't wait, make a plan to vote today. For more voting information, head to aarp.org slash TX. I'm Chloe Dow and I'm a Texas voter. Greetings, staffer. This is Councilman Cecil Willis on the campaign trail in Stafford, spreading my message and my vision for Stafford. Friendship and fairness comes before power. And I'm here to formally endorse my good friend and city council member, Cecil Willis. Join me in my endorsement of council member Cecil Willis. If you helped a friend get a job, and once they were hired, they ignored you, what would you think of them? For a quarter of a century, Congressional District 18 has voted for Sheila Jackson Lee, and what do we have to show for it? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me 13 times, she's gotta go. I'm Wendell Champion, and I need your vote. Visit me at champion2020.com. I'm Wendell Champion, and I approve this message. When it comes to protecting yourself and your partners, all the information out there can be overwhelming. Visit our website. We are a free and confidential service striving to help you stay informed and stay notified. We are committed to a healthy Houston. And now back to the Cam Hill Show. Hey, we are back with Gerald Austin. Hey, my friend, we were just talking about uh, their 50th anniversary. We were talking about the business of music in COVID and how you feel it's going to affect the world in music right now. There was a question that was just being asked that just someone sent about the fact that a person wanting their local, but they want to become mainstream. What advice would you give them and their artist? Well, you know, a lot, a lot of it depends on now social media. Um, you need to have great songs. You need to have a great social media team to put you out there. Because once you get enough hits on like YouTube and the social media, especially YouTube, then a, rec a major company will be interested and may give you an offer for maybe a single deal, possibly an album deal. Mm. But you have to be true to yourself and do great music and, and believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. And from my point of view, keep God first at all times. Wow, that's good, that's good. And Especially know the business. Yourself. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry, know the business. <laughs> know the business. <laughs> Definitely that, definitely that too. But yes, uh, being out here, like we were saying, a lot of people, labels aren't picking up as many people as they were at once before and a lot of people are independent exactly exactly in fact this our new album is is an independent on an independent label which is wow. my own label mm -hmm. and um i have uh put together a staff of, of people doing work in my social media and i'm getting some radio play around the country um a lot of it is on internet radio but you know we have a fan base that we can still reach you know and that's what I'm going after that and the younger artists whenever I can make sure it's played so they can hear it. Absolutely. A lot of young oh. fans do know you and do know, love love uh, the music. I mean, they were they grew up on the music. You know, their parents were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, you know, um, speaking of that, we were this is my 50th year as a professional singer and the man, man with Manhattan's. Also, this August 15th was the Manhattan's 58th year wow. of bringing music to our fans. Wow. So we had a, this has been a wonderful year for us. It sure, it sure has. Just to be able to see it now, and we were just talking about just uh, 
the way you came into the business, the way you all are still together. Uh, people are coming in and they're, you know, of course, having to replace others, but still the synergy. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the music, it's the love for what we're doing. You know, you got to love it. You have to love what you're doing and to be able to give that energy out, that synergy out, so that you can receive it back when you walk out on that stage to perform. You know, and it's very important, you know, with some of the new productions today, with auto-tune and all, a lot of artists can't go out and perform what they perform in the studio, the way they mm -hmm. perform in the studio. Mm -hmm. Because you got to be able to sing it. People want to hear you sing it and perform it the way you recorded it. And there are some of us that can't do that. Right. Right. Especially with the, with, with the new equipment that's out, you know. Exactly. exactly. They can't perform it. Right. And it's, it's, oh, it's a letdown. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you see going forward uh, now? And we were just talking about COVID, but just period for the world, just going forward. I know election is now. Uh, we're in, <clears throat> Texas is in the middle of early voting. And uh, yeah. you've seen it across the world, just different times and different, you know, through the years and things like that. And I know, like you said, keeping God first. Yes. And, and it's, it's, it's important. And I can, it, it cannot express it enough. Go out and vote. Yes. We have to make a change. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this, and, and I know some, there may be some fans, some people that may disagree with, with me, but I'll tell you just like this. I do not want 45 to become 46. So please get out and vote. Yes, yes. And right now here in Texas, we have two weeks of early voting. We will end in, on the 30th of October. And of course, November 3rd is the election day. But I tell people, do not wait. Do it now. You are exactly right. Get out. If you can vote early, please go vote early. If right. you have mail-in ballots, Take care of that. Mail them in and get it done. Absolutely. Because this, this is one of the most important elections of our time. It is. It our, is. I yes. haven't seen, a. have seen several elections. I've gone through several, of course, but this one is pivotal. This one has to be. Yes. This has to be. And please, I can't emphasize it enough. Please, everybody, please go out and vote. The other thing we want to emphasize during this time is wear your mask and wash your hands. Oh, yes. Without a doubt. Wow. Without a doubt. Because I think we can eradicate this if we continue to wear our mask and wash our hands. And when, if and when the vaccine is available, you know, it, it, it can eradicate, we can eradicate this. Yeah. can bring it down to them or just totally eradicate it. And if it's eradicated, then there are some places where we'll be able to go out and perform mm -hmm. for you. The audience there live, mm -hmm. you know, but it's going to take us wearing our mask, washing our hands, and, you know, following the, following the instructions of the scientists and doctors that they're giving us. We have to do that. That sounds good. I tell you what, we appreciate you, my friend, for everything you've done. We appreciate for all the 50 years of dedication. My God. Thank you. And all Thank the time you. that you have given the world, because that's taking away from family. You're, you're traveling all over the world. And thank, oh, we yeah. thank, look, we thank your wife and your son <laughs> <laughs> for allowing thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We allow. You know, I'd like for our fans to know how to reach us. They can reach us at uh, our website is www.let's just kiss and say goodbye. Um, our Instagram is the Manhattans um, featuring Gerald Alston. Um, Facebook is the Manhattans featuring Gerald Alston. And the um, our Twitter is at G the Manhattan. So you can reach out and touch. And please, all of our songs that are released, um, get it ready. And and um, she's coming home. 
It's on all the digital platforms. So you can pick it up. You can download it and have some good music. Absolutely. That's where you can purchase them. That's where you can reach out. That's where you can inbox asking more questions, asking yes. about anything, and also any upcoming events that you may have are on there, right? Uh, yes. Yes. I, I do. I, I must admit, I've been a little slow in COVID. I got to update our website with the dates, the same dates, but just move forward. Yes. Move until next year. Absolutely. So, but otherwise, our website is still up and running. There and you go. A lot of I appreciate you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an awesome time with you, and I appreciate you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, Cam. And again, I'd like to thank Emilio White yeah. for, for putting us together to yes. make this happen. And he's been a he's been a true fan and friend from back in the 80s, all the way back in the 80s. You know, and, and I truly love him and I thank him, thank him, and I thank him so much. Thank you so much, my friend. Talk to you soon. Be safe. Right. God bless. On tomorrow, we will have Dr. Conti Terrell, domestic violence she'll be talking about. And we'll see you then, 1230 to 130 Central Standard Time. Bye. Hill Show. If you'd like to advertise your business or become a sponsor, contact the Cam Hill Show at gmail.com.